the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing is full of emotion and nothing is holy, bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Dearly beloved in Christ, I welcome you very sincerely to our series of the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. I hope you're doing okay, and um, I pray God to continue to bless you and give you all it takes to continue safely and steadfastly on this journey of faith. Dearly beloved in Christ, once again, um, my name is Reverend Father Emem Moren of the Catholic Diocese of Ikorikbene in Nigeria. And today I bring you our usual series centering around the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year B. Dearly beloved in Christ, there is something that um, God is, there is a message God is giving us today. Wherever you find yourself in this world today, it's like there is something that is very common. And that thing, that thing is, a, a lot of people are finding it very difficult to understand why there is so much hunger in the world. They are finding it difficult to understand the reason for the hunger not because um, people wouldn't be hungry, but because we know people who are living in affluence. And I was just listening to some commentary about a certain nation I'm not going to mention. And they say it, it, it's just now there is 1% of the population of that nation that is in serious affluence. They have much more than they can much more than they need and that 90 percent of the population of that country 90 percent is uh, like sharing what one person that one percent has kept for himself so you see one person has so much for himself and let's say one percent of the population has so much for themselves and 90% of the population are sharing what that 1% has. There's so much hunger in the world. And why, we, why should we have so much hunger in this world when there are people who have enough and to spare? Dearly beloved in Christ, the readings of the 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time Year B addresses this and tells us it is because we have refused to understand what it means to share. There are beautiful readings from the first reading to the second reading to the gospel reading. But there is a point that really struck me in the second reading. There's a point in the second reading that really struck me. But first of all, let's look at the, the three readings serially. The first reading is from the second book of Kings, chapter 2, sorry, chapter 4, verses 42 to 44. The second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. The third reading, the gospel reading, is from the gospel according to John, chapter 1, chapter 6, verses 1 to 15. If you look at the readings, all of them are saying something similar. All of them have to do with the need to share. All the readings have to do with the need to share. I was talking about hunger. There should be no hung hunger in this universe if all of us understood the need and if we understood the philosophy of sharing. And that's why, dearly beloved in Christ, on this 17th Sunday in Ordinary Time, I want us to reflect on a theme that has come out very conspicuously, especially in the second reading of today, when Paul tells the Ephesians, he tells them, support one another in charity. That's the theme of our reflection. Support one another in charity. 
dearly beloved in Christ, if we knew what it meant or what it means to support, and if we know what it means to be in charity, to do that in charity, the world would be a better place. Nobody would go hungry. Support one another in charity. And that is what I, I recommend to you. Well, not really I, but the Lord recommends to us from the readings. And as if to prove that that is the central message, even though I'm drawing, I'm drawing it from the second reading, from the letter of St. Paul to Ephesians, as if to prove that that is the central message of this Sunday. The first reading and the last reading all join in talking about the need for us to support one another in charity. Talk about the need to share. And the two readings try to dismiss our fears. There are normal fears. There are, there are, there are peculiar fears when people refuse to share. Partly they think, oh, if I share, I won't have enough. If I share, I'm going to lose. If I share, it may not even be enough. If I share, what I have is too little. We give all the excuses. The first reading and the gospel readings are telling us no matter no matter how little you think you have, whatever you have that is little, when shared in charity, is much. Little shared in charity is much. Therefore, my dear brother, my dear sister, stand up, begin to share. Begin to share whatever blessing God has given to you. Don't ever fear that it's too small. Because anything, no matter how small, when it is shared in charity, when it is shared in charity, it is much. And therefore, support one another in charity. And the world will be a better place. Let's go to the readings and see how these come, come through in the readings. In the first reading, we are told a man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing Elisha the prophet some gift. And when Elisha got the gift as a man of God, only 20 barley loaves made from the first fruits and fresh grain in the ear. We are told Elisha just said, give it to the people. See, dearly beloved in Christ, you have to understand this word. You know, literally, yes, give it to the people means give it to these people. But metaphorically, in the Hebrew world, the, the phrase oi poloi, when you say oi poloi, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, very, a very good compliment if you were called oi poloi. Oi poloi, metaphorically, in figuratively, in the Hebrew world, oi poloi meant the common people, the less privileged, those who were in need. For example, that word is used when Nebuchadnezzar took the Israelites into slavery. Um, he left the oi poloi, that is, he left the common people, the blind, the lame, those who could not help themselves. So that word has some negative connotation, figuratively. Whether Elisha used it um, in the right sense or he used it figuratively, we can also interpret it. That's why, that's the beauty of scripture. We can also interpret it and look at it figuratively. Oi poloi. So when Elisha said, give, give it to the people, he meant serve those who are in need. Give it to those who are in trouble. Give it to these people who need food. Give it to these people who are hungry. So when Elisha said that, it's interesting that he said, give to the people. But his, his servants, they said no. And they were arguing. Um, what is this for a multitude of people? His servants objected. How can I set this before 800 people? And Elisha insisted, give it to the people. Give it to the oil polloi. Give it to these people who I need. And when he did, they ate and, they shall, and there was some left over. There were some left over and what does this tell us daily beloved in christ do not ever think that your little is too small if you're disposed to share if you're disposed to give in charity if you're supposed if you're disposed to support in charity your little is much and that is exactly what we have learned from here and that's why i'm saying the theme of this reflection this sunday is support one another in charity <clears throat> Excuse me. Let us learn to support one another in charity. Now, come to the second reading. The second reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians is the one that says it clearly. I think in chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Support one another in charity. Bear with one another through love. If you love, if you love, you will share what you have. If you love, you'll be moved 
with sympathy, sympathy and in sympathy to help others. And um, while that second reading is giving us that exhortation to support one another in charity, the gospel reading, like the first reading also, tells us how and why we should not have any excuse but go ahead and support one another in charity. The gospel is from John. The gospel according to John chapter 6 verses 1 to 15. Jesus again had a very big crowd that came. And he knew why they came. But even when he knew that they did not have all the good intentions, Jesus had pity on them. It is interesting that the same phrase, the same phrase that Elisha, sorry, it was Elisha, not Elijah. The same phrase that Elisha used in the first reading, give it to the people, the people, oi poloi. Jesus uses it, even though this is the New Testament, it's Greek, but we can see the correlation there. Jesus also says, give it to the people, oi poloi, the common people, the less privileged, support them, help them. But what is interesting here is just as Jesus just as Elisha fed the oi poloi with just a few things and it went round, it went round. Jesus is feeding 5,000 men, which means more than 5,000 because they, I'm sure there were women there and there were children there. He's feeding 5,000 men with only five loaves and two fish. And he said, and at the end of it, he told them, um, get the people, get the people. Oi poloi, if it were in Greek, in Hebrew, get the people to recline. And we are told, uh, he took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed. And they all ate. 5,000 people ate. The only beloved in Christ. Go out there and support one another in charity. Go out there and share what you have. Stop those excuses. Oh, I have too little. What I have is not enough. It's not going to go around. Have you ever seen how children share even one grain of groundnut? You, you, they continue to pick and pick little, little pieces and they're happy. They are very happy. Go out there and share like children who are sharing a grain of groundnut. You see, charity is not when you give so much. Charity is when you give even that little you have voluntarily, giving help to somebody voluntarily. It doesn't have to be food alone. That's what I'm saying. Support one another in charity. You can support people in different ways. Support them in times of you know, sickness. Support them in prayer or with prayers. Support them with your humor. Support. There are so many ways you can support people. Support one another, please, in charity. Money is one of them. Food is one of them. Company is another way of supporting people. You know, this world would be a better place if we knew what it means to support Especially, especially we, when we narrow it down to food, what we eat, what we drink, and what we um, help ourselves with. Do you know that there are so many of us, let's talk about ourselves now, the pastors, the priests, the ministers of God. The people of God, uh, they, they, they sacrifice a lot to bring us whatever they bring us just because we are children of God. And sometimes we have much more than we need because you know, when one person gives to the multitude, it may not be so much. But when the multitude gives to one person, it's bound to be much. And some of us can be tempted to allow those things to rot away there. You can't finish all those things. Why, give, why not give out? Learn from Elisha. Give to the people. Support the people. That will eradicate, even if it doesn't eradicate, it will reduce the level of hunger in the land. There's a lot of hunger in the land. There's a lot of hunger in the land. We can all reduce that. How many of such things in your store are you sure you will finish before they rot away? How many clothes are you putting on? How many pairs of shoes can you use? How many cars can you drive at a time? How many rooms? In how many rooms can you sleep at night? So there are so many things we need to use to support others. Stop the excuses. It's not small. It's not, it is not much. It is small. It is old. Stop those excuses. Support one another in charity. Whether you are an adult or a young person, you can still do this. Learn. This is a value that is very important. Learn to support one another in charity and stop the excuses. Again, the little you have will become much when you share in charity. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, thank you for the message you've given to us. And thank you for helping us to understand that our world can be better and that we are the ones who will the face of the aid by sharing what you've given us and supporting one another in that sharing and in charity. We pray, Lord God, to give us the grace to put this into practice so that we would reflect the love you have for us by giving us all these things and then we share it with others. And whenever we're able to do this in our own little way, Lord God, may we never, ever lose our reward. And may the blessings of the mighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit remain with all of you now and forevermore. Amen. Yes, dearly beloved in Christ, thank you for everything. And um, remember to subscribe to our channel. And as you go out there, please, 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 in whatever way you are able, support one another in charity. God bless you.